In this video, we're going to take a look at the data templates that are used to set up the HCSS heavy bit estimating system. Welcome. If you are viewing this video, it's probably because your company has elected to implement the HCSS heavy bit estimating system used for crew based, cost based estimating of civil construction. In order to get your heavy bit system set up, we're going to need some basic information to fill in the gaps so that we can start generating costs for the work that you do. This is done through these data templates. They're simply spreadsheets and it's just a list of information, nothing crazy. So let's get started. We're going to start with the first tab, Labor. And you'll notice up here in yellow, we've got some examples. These are just examples. They may or may not be exactly what your company needs, but it's to give you a general idea. Now, what are we doing here? Okay, when you're estimating with the HCSS heavy bid system, you're putting together basic elements like labor, operator costs, equipment costs. Those are going to get put together as crews. You're going to add to that materials that you buy, pipe, stone, etc. And you're going to put all those things together to generate the cost of what it's going to take for your company to complete the work in the field on the job you're bidding. Pretty straightforward. Well, in order to come up with those crews, we're going to have to have the components for them. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a look at what your company has in the terms of labor classifications. Now, what do I mean by classifications? When you're estimating with heavy bid, you're not really usually going to be estimating the people based on this particular person. Like it's not it's not Jim that you're estimating being out there in the field doing this or Terry or any group of people. It's labor classifications. And what I mean is that you'll take certain laborers, we'll say, we'll start with that, that maybe fall into a common category like general laborers. And you might have two, three, four, a hundred that fall into that category. And so you'll take an average rate that works for that. That's how it's generally done. So you're going to have to take a look at all the people that work for your company and figure out what class they belong into and come up with average rates for them. It may be that you've only got one or two people in each uh, type of classification. It could be that you have dozens, but it's the same concept either way. So we're going to come up with an average rate for that. Now remember that rate is, and you'll see under the notes over here, that this rate is exclusive of any add-on costs, uh, any markup, uh, any uh, anything, any taxes, any fringes. This is purely just the base rate that you pay on average for that labor class. We're going to handle the taxes and fringes here in a second. So you're going to come up with an average rate for each labor classification that you uh, have. And then you're going to get with your accounting department and find out, hey, what, what are the payroll taxes that our company has to pay for each one of these on average? And so that'll be things like uh, whatever your state's percentage rate is on you know, FICA and FUDA, SUDA, those sorts of things. As, as I said, you'll get that from your accounting department or if you have a payroll service like an ADP. Finally, you're going to come up with, if your company needs it, if you use it, if you have dollars per hour that get added to any of these labor classifications, things like vacation pay, insurance, things like that, that is paid, that you basically calculate on a dollar per hour basis, you simply total those up and put them in the fringes category. All right. Now, the last thing I want to show you is under units, you'll notice the vast majority of them say, man hours per unit, all right? In order to use any labor classification in a crew, it has to be based on the number of hours. It has to be based on an hourly rate, okay? That doesn't mean you can't have other types of uh, labor classifications. Let's say that you want to include a superintendent on your job and you want to do it on a monthly basis. You can do that, but just understand that that will not be part of a crew, so it won't get factored that way. Your trainer is going to explain all this in far more detail but just, just so that you know that the majority of what you come up with is going to be on an hourly basis. So be sure to read the notes over here on this side of the page, okay, to see what the trainer is going to help you with. But we're trying to keep this as simple as possible to make your life as easy as we can. So the next tab down here you'll see is the equipment tab. Very similarly to the labor tab, 
Again, there are examples up here at the top. This may or may not fit your needs. Like this, uh, you, you may have several loaders in the same classification, and so you can do a 544 loader classification, or maybe that doesn't work for you. Maybe that's too specific. So maybe you might want to say, okay, all of our excavators that are anywhere from 40 to 65,000 pounds fit into our medium excavator class. That's how you're going to do yours. You're going to figure out what works for you. And you may have some that is like you only have one of it, and maybe it's very specific. Okay, so you're going to put your list down here in the white area. And again, by the hour is what the piece of equipment will have to be in order to use it in a crew. The rental rate. Let's talk about that a little bit. What do we mean by the rental rate? Does that mean the rate where if you were to call United Rentals and say, I need this piece of equipment, the rate that you would get from them? No. In HCSS Heavy Bid, what that rate refers to is this is the rate that my company will quote unquote rent that piece of equipment to my company for on an hourly basis. So what is it? That's that's simply the, the cost of the ownership of that piece of equipment typically. All right. So now if you can't get that information, if your accounting department doesn't have that broken down, if you have a fleet department that doesn't have that broken down, there are multiple websites out there that can help you estimate the cost of civil equipment for your uh, for this calculation and if you're still having trouble then contact us by all means but usually this is simply things like how much it costs you to buy it uh, how much it costs you to insure it and then determining how long you're going to keep it and how many hours a year you're going to use it and then just doing the division and saying okay this is what it costs us to own this for a five-year period planning on using it for a thousand hours a year something along those lines but as I said, there's, there's resources out there to help you with that if you need it. Now, the other column here is the EOE rate. That's the Equipment Operating Expense Rate. So those are the uh, costs to run that piece of equipment, fuel it, lube it, maybe do some minor repairs to it, that sort of thing. So you can take all of that information. Again, what does it cost us to run this thing over a year's time? And divide that by the number of hours that you believe you're going to use that piece of equipment in a year. That's usually the simplest way that it's done. But again, if you need help with it, there's plenty of resources online that can help you with that. And again, there's good information over here. This tells you what your trainer is going to help you with when they're on, when they're working with you directly, and just some real uh, basic information that kind of reiterates what I'm talking about here. The other tab, the next tab, is the crew tab. So again, you'll notice there are some examples up here. So this is going to be whatever works for your company. See, because ultimately what you're going to be doing when you're working with your trainer is you're going to be taking those labor classifications and those equipment classifications and putting them together in crews. And a crew could be anything from a 20-man paving crew to a one-man erosion control maintenance crew and anything in between. But it's whatever works for your company. So it's just, like I said, these are just some uh, basic uh, suggestions up here. You can use this to figure out what's going to work for your company. The next tab is bond rates. Now this sheet here, I would simply pull this out and send that off to my surety company and ask them to kindly fill out this information because this also will be incorporated into heavy bid so that you don't have to remember to calculate a bond or anything. The system will do that for you automatically if you have work where you are required to supply a bond. Finally, we have a tab here for workers' compensation rates. Every state is different on the amount that they charge for various workers' comp uh, types, of, types of activity. So you, again, you'll probably get this either from your accounting department or possibly if you have a, uh, a payroll uh, service like an ADP or something, they could probably supply this also. So those are the data templates. Again, we're trying to keep this as simple as possible. If you have any questions at all, we're here to help you through every step of this process. Now, your first line of defense is going to be the, your project coordinator that you're working with for your heavy bid implementation. You also have available to you the website help.hcss.com with dozens upon dozens, if not hundreds, of questions and answers and that you can access to find information. And also you have available to you our 24-7 technical support 
at 800-444-3196. And they're here to help you also. So good luck and congratulations on choosing the best possible estimating system for civil construction. Please call us with any questions. Thank you.